Hello, you are very welcome to our thematic session three here today on the continuing program of EU Open Data Days. My name is Jennifer Baker. I am a tech policy journalist based in Brussels. And my job today is really to put your questions to our great speakers. If you were at the thematic session yesterday, then you know how this works. We collect your questions via Slido. You can go to slido.com or sli.do and enter the code data viz for policy so that's data viz number four policy to get into this thematic session and then please while our speakers are speaking start thinking about your questions start sending them in don't wait to the very end because we've got a really tight schedule each of our speakers is going to spend about 15 minutes on their presentation and we will then go to five minutes of q a and we'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible you can also of course share on social media Use the hashtag EUDataViz and EU Open Data Days to get your colleagues and everybody else involved and interested in our discussions today. Now, we're going to kick off with Darren McGarry and Walter Nies, who are both from the Joint Research Centre of the European Commission. Uh, Darren, Darren is a communication specialist and he brings this innovative communication and visualisation angle to translate complex issues into understandable language. Wouter is one of the first to open a European multi-sectoral energy system model um, and he's going to tell us a lot about the work that he's been doing as well. Together they're going to talk about simplifying complexity, visualising energy scenarios for climate neutrality, so bringing in both sides, the energy side, the communication side, to talk about how you get this complex and detailed ideas and aims of the Commission across. So with that, I'm going to hand over the floor to Darren and Wouter. Gentlemen, we're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And um, good afternoon to everybody. Um, I'm going to kick off and Wouter is going to um, uh, join the presentation later. Um, I'll give you a brief agenda of our, of our presentation. We're going to give you a little bit of history of how we developed this tool and then um, we're going to tell how this tool can play a role in uh, policy making. And uh, we're going to save the best for last, which is an actual tour around the tool. So where do we start? Uh, Europe has a, um, a goal to deliver the European Green Deal. They want a modern, competitive, prosperous and climate neutral economy. They want to be the first major economy to go climate neutral by 2050 and we need to reduce drastically our co2 emissions we need to use less energy at the same time we need to produce affordable energy for everyone and this is a massive challenge it's not just for industry it's not just for research centers it's for every european but there are many different energy technologies that contribute to our energy transition there are different choices different opinions and there is a huge need to create awareness and understanding. Next slide, please. The JRC, the European Commission's Joint Research Centre, is ideally placed to communicate about science. We see here a recent, a recent uh, Eurobarometer. You see that people are, are willing to accept what scientists say. Um, next slide. How did, how did we start to develop this tool? We started by developing a physical tool, a tool that combined uh, various columns, looking at different scenarios, the colors, and these columns represented different uh, energy technologies. And as a, as a communicator, I was always amazed by the modeling work of my colleagues, the unbelievable amount of data, literally millions of data points, hundreds of considerations, but as a communicator, how can we take all this data and simplify this complexity? How can we tell a visual story and depicting what our energy futures could look like, both for policymakers, but also for our next door neighbors? And this is, this is how our story started. And when we started to visualize this tool, this is actually taken from the European Parliament. There's a huge amount of interest. This is at a, a STOA event, the Science and Technology Options Assessment Group. But despite the success of this physical tool, it had its limitations. And because of the size of the challenge of the European Green Deal, 
we wanted this to reach more people. We wanted it to be more powerful, more accessible. And now we're just going to show you an introduction, a short video on how we wanted to reach millions of smartphone users with a unique interactive tool. How will your life be powered in the future? How will we generate and use energy? Europe aims to be climate neutral by 2050. To reach this ambitious goal, we need to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030. There is a huge lack of awareness of how we produce and use energy. What the future options will be and how it will affect our lives, economy and environment. It is critical to create knowledge and awareness of the different options for citizens, our next door neighbors and policymakers in understandable language. There is currently no effective visualization tool available to translate complex energy scenarios into impactful visualizations or to provide EU citizens with awareness of energy options for the future. In a first step, we collected the results of many complex models containing vast amounts of knowledge produced by data analysis in the energy domain. A multidisciplinary team of experts from the energy, communication, and interactive visualization domains joined forces to devise an innovative web-based visualization tool. The application consists of a series of interactive visualizations. The total energy use of the EU, the energy needed to produce electricity and derived fuels, and finally, the energy used in buildings, transport and industry, because these are the three key areas in which we consume energy in our daily lives. Users can select and compare different future scenarios, at both EU and country level. Each colored bar represents a different energy source. The tool was developed for mobile phones and for large screen presentations to ensure maximum usability and dissemination. A tool has been created for both experts and non-experts to help them understand and compare energy options for a more sustainable future. This will help citizens to make more informed choices and increase public acceptance of future sustainable energy options in the European Green Deal. Please try out our new tool with this link. Okay, so there was a, a very brief description of how, uh, how we developed this tool and how we wanted to make it uh, you know, accessible to as many people as possible. So basically, um, the European Commission uses complex models to look at the future energy scenarios. This helps to evaluate the, uh, the transition, but scenarios, they are, they're not for, they are they're, they're not forecast. They describe possible futures. And as we previously mentioned, the time frame for this massive transition is a 30-year time frame. So it's huge, and we all need to be on board. This tool is already part of the policy-making cycle. This was actually used as part of the Fit for 55 package, used to explain the scenarios that are being used there. Um, but it's not just developing a tool. One really has to focus on how to disseminate this tool, how to get it to the right platforms, using the right channels, the right influences, so a huge amount of people will be using this. And it's, it's also important for policymakers uh, to reach decisions, and it's, 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 it's key that we reach today's youth, um, because what today's youth are going to be taking the decisions tomorrow. It also helps policymakers feel more secure when they're making statements regarding the developments of technology, such as tripling the electricity production from wind. And in the future, this tool will help us to compare many different scenarios, because we can add other scenarios to this tool. So now I'm going to hand you over to Wouter, who will give you a guided tool around this tool. Wouter? Yes. I'm unmuting myself. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I'm here to explain you a bit how our tool works and uh, what, we, what lessons we can learn from our tool. Uh, but first, let me explain you the power of observation. Does it happen to you? you? You meet someone, but when you talk to them, you try to convince them uh, about uh, something new. Uh, they, uh, they look at you like, but what, what is it you're telling me you're not convincing enough? And I, I would like to have some proof of what you're telling me. Um, well, what, what helps, we think, is to, to come up with something visible 
um, where uh, where what she's convincing enough a visual tool, uh, and then uh, this is the power of observation when. Uh, with awareness comes the confidence and the acceptance of, of some new information. Um, so that's for for us the, the key concept. Now, uh, to understand a bit better uh, our tool, it's good to be aware of the different energy sources. Uh, there is five renewable energy sources and, and four non-renewables. Uh, the one that is a bit most new is geo and air. I'm explaining this is, let's say, geothermal and ambient heat, difficult world, word for just, uh, uh, in fact, local renewable uh, heat from uh, taken up by heat pumps, uh, mostly uh, air. So what's next is another a short demonstration video. So please enjoy uh, the explanation of how our tool works. Welcome to this demonstration video. You can find our tool by using the keywords energy scenarios tool in your search engine. This will bring you to the official website and you can click on the yellow box or on the picture to get started. The paging introduces you to the tool and I recommend uh, the additional information, for example, on the European Green Deal. GRC colleagues have studied the effects of climate change and you will find a link to a video explaining what will happen if we don't act. I skipped the paging because after all this is a demonstration until pick a scenario. You see what is included but for, for now we select 2005. So on the left side you see now 2005 and on the right side you see 2019. There are always two sides in the visualization and you can change the selection at any moment. All buttons are clickable, including the round ones. Each bar consists of different colors, representing the use of different energy sources. You can swipe up to make it a bit more readable. On top, you can select what you want to see. And the default view is total energy use. It's a sum of four what we call sectors. The first sector is energy industries. It covers the energy needed to produce electricity, heat and fuels, and it's not obvious for most people that all of energy is needed for electricity production. The remaining three sectors are industry, buildings and transport. For these sectors, we use wide bars to, rep to visualize the consumption of electricity, district heat, and for future scenarios, also hydrogen. These are energy carriers that are produced by a mix of energy sources as shown in the energy industries and also as shown when you click on the eye icon to get some more information. <clears throat> by clicking on the button as share of total, you can see that for each of the colored uh, bars, the energy use of the four sectors add up to the total. You can also see that the energy use in the industry in the buildings and in the transport, or more or less the same. Now, let's get started with showing how you can create stories based on the data. We are still looking at historical energy use. And we see that little has changed over the last 15 years for some energy sources. Let's look, for example, at oil. Oil decreased, but did oil consumption, for example, also decrease in the transport sector? No, in fact, there was even a small increase. Did nothing change then for transport? Well, that's too easy. We need to go to the detail uh, of the country to have the answer. And for example, if we go to the Netherlands, compare what happened uh, in the last 15 years, we see that the Netherlands managed to have a substantial reduction of oil consumption. If we move to the next country, Poland, we have a complete different picture. As you can see, the oil has increased a lot. Going back to the EU now. Remember, we are looking at oil. Now, where has oil reduced? From looking at the tool, you will learn that it's mainly in the building sector that the oil has uh, decreased. Other things that we can learn from the tool. We go back to the tool and we look at the right side, 2019. What share of total energy in the EU comes from solar? Is it 1%, is it 5% or 10%? It's a yellow bar, but it's easier to click on the 
button by fuel because also then you can read that solar energy was around 174 terawatt hours which is actually uh, very close to one percent of the total energy use can we compare countries as well yes for sure we compare belgium with sweden these countries have comparable comparable number of inhabitants but use energy in a complete different way as you can also see, for example, here in the buildings. Let's now move to the future. We go to the scenario 2050, fit for 55 mix. <clears throat> and in this scenario, the, the scenario achieves the net zero objective for 2050. And we can, for example, look at transport and wonder what is the share of transport energy demand in the EU? How much comes from fossil uh, sources? We can see the answer here. Oil is reduced to 6% of today's consumption. But more important, what do we have to do in the next 10 years? For that, we go to the 2030 scenario. In this scenario, member states collectively deliver the 55% reduction in greenhouse gases in a cost-effective emission uh, with cost-effective emission reduction contributions. And we have the data for each country. At EU level, electricity generation and buildings are key. Both sectors reducing around 50% CO2 in the next 10 years. How is this possible, for example, in the buildings? You can see here with the red color, the oil. And you can see oil needs to be reduced by 75%. And we shouldn't switch it to natural gas. On the contrary, natural gas itself is reducing. The visualization allows you to, to look at the numbers, to calculate them yourself, and then you will con conclude that natural gas is reducing by 35%. So these were a few examples. Uh, you can click also on the I icon at any time on the right uh, top to gain additional information on the scenarios or on the sectors. These are a few of the eye-opening comparisons that we can visualize with this unique tool. And I thank you very much for watching. Uh, now it's your turn to search the Energy Scenarios tool, to try it out yourself, and if you like it, to share it at, as much as possible. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for uh, for your attention uh, to this demonstration. And as you see, the uh, the focus has moved from uh, action, uh, sorry, from targets to action. And the actions are clear: uh, electrification where possible, where there is no electric alternative, low carbon hydrogen for industries or e fuels for planes. And we show that this works on each phone, and that's very powerful. Because mobile first, we think, allows making your point at any time from anywhere. And this can be the person next to you in a restaurant. This can be the policymaker who's mostly following social media on his phone or her phone. And regardless of the mobile versus desktop, also this policymaker now has a tool to make his or her point, verify statements, and to tell an honest story. Stories that we know is not always easy. Quoting our president, it's it's Europe's man on the moon moment. So we have to be open about the magnitude of the transitions, and and we think this is a very good way uh, to 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 be very explicit about about this. So thank you very much, and please start also exploring. Thank you, gentlemen, for your presentation. We've got just a couple of questions, and so a short short answers would be appreciated. I think um, first one's very straightforward. How can I find this tool? Is it available to everyone? Uh, so basically, um, if if you search uh, energy scenarios tool, uh, you will be directed to uh, the official uh, European Commission website and find the uh, official EU uh, Commission scenarios. The second question from our audience is a little bit more difficult. It's how do I go about developing a tool like this? Darren, I think you, yes. Yeah, um, maybe I can very quickly an answer this. Um, I, I've been involved in, in developing quite a few tools of this of this kind. 
And I mean, fundamentally, we've always used a triangle of, of, of skills. Uh, basically, we have in the, in the three points of the triangle, we have someone like Wouter, who is an, an expert in the area that we're trying to simplify. We're trying to get the message across. And the expert needs to be very open to the need for communication. And then we add to that triangle, we add a, a communication expert. And then we add a generally a third party company who could actually build the uh, build a tool or, or, or make the digital platform that's, uh, that's necessary for it. At the end of the day, it's teamwork. At the end of the day, it's also uh, respecting each other's worlds because we need to, as a communication person, we are trying to get a message across by leaving out data. As someone like Wouter, they're using vast amounts of data to get their message across. And it's, it's finding this balance and having respect for each other's world that leads to the, uh, the development of really su successful communication tools. And well, I'm, I'm more than willing to uh, discuss later with any, anyone who would like, uh, would like more, more details on developing these, these tools or just send me an email. Well, thank you very much. Thank you both uh, very much for that introduction to your work. And uh, I know it's not a long time to try and get everything across, so I appreciate that. And of course, I will remind our audience that there are tools on the platform that you can use to interact with the speakers even after these sessions. And of course, in the future, these sessions will be available online. We are recording them, so you'll be able to check them out at your own pace. With that, I'm going to hand over to 